Let me do the joke. You drive here, Mike? Did you drive here? You're not going to drive away. <laughs> All right. It's not a joke. What today's talk about is, is basically some cyber safety for senior citizens, or but it can go for anybody. But as we all know, the older we get, the more trusting sometimes we are, and the more maybe we're not in, in quite in tune with technology, as far as the scans, you know how to work. Who's got a Who's got a cell phone? It's one of the smartphones here. Right? Uh, computer, laptop, iPad. Who does you know keep track of the you know, the grandkids and kids by social media? You know, Facebook, and Twitter, Instagram, whatever you have. Just taking pictures and sending them to the internet. Um, cut that one off. There are several types of types of scams that a lot of the you know, everybody's susceptible to. And just a few that I kind of picked out to, to, to uh, kind of you know, you know, uh, aim in or uh, focus in with this crowd. Who's ever received a, uh, an email from, say, Microsoft or PayPal or something that looks official and says, hey, you need to contact us right away because your account has been compromised or uh, click on this and we'll help you, you know, do this? You know? Those type of scams, if you are not expecting an email from somebody like that, don't open it, don't click on anything. Because as soon as you click on, on that email, it can download a, vi a virus or a what's called a payload to your computer or your phone. And without you knowing it, they can suck all your personal information right, right out. And talk louder. Talk louder? Yes, yeah, that's Okay. Sorry. Okay, talk louder. Get the microphone up here. Maybe you should just sit down. Amen, brother. Go. Cool. Okay. Uh, what about another scam that we see a lot of is you'll get an email for a lottery winning or, or a phone call. Yeah. There, we can adapt to this. Okay. <laughs> Must be meat proof. <laughs> how about the emails for <laughs> how about the emails for uh, lottery winnings? If you click on this email or this, if you send us two hundred dollars, we'll that those are the fees on this ten thousand dollar prize that you want. Has anybody ever seen any of those kind of emails? That that's another one you see. And you know, heck. If I pay two hundred dollars, they're going to release the ten thousand dollars that's owed to me. Too good to be true. Probably too good to be true. Uh, another one, especially in the springtime, is the IRS. Uh, the IRS is never going to send you an email and tell you that you owe them taxes. If you see anything from IRS, almost one hundred percent of the time. Okay, I'm going to say one hundred percent of the time, it is a scam. 
because they're going to say, okay, we just need to verify this, or you have unclaimed money. I know if I have unclaimed money, I have no unclaimed money. <laughs> Make sure that you don't provide any of the information with them. They're going to ask for you know, date of birth, social security number, mother's maiden name, where your dad was, your, your, your paternal or maternal you know, parent was, was born. What kind of questions are those? Those are like security questions, aren't they? And humans are creatures of habit, so do we use the same pin codes or security questions or passwords for multiple accounts? Don't do that. No, 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 no. But, but just, just be aware of this. It's the stuff you need to think about. Uh, I've seen some really good fake PayPal, which is not a way to send money back and forth. I've seen some very, very good you know, fraudulent PayPal emails. They'll come to me, because I use PayPal quite a bit. And I'll look at it and go, boy, what did I order? And I better, whoa. You know, and I'm in the business. And they still do a very nice job. They will have the right logos. They will have the right uh, format. A lot of times, though, you can usually tell, because they'll say, dear PayPal member, or dear Microsoft client, dear computer user. They're not going to say, dear Mr. Smith, or dear Wex. They're not going to use a personalized greetings, because it's a phishing attempt. And they're basically throwing the line out there to see who they can catch to reel in and you know, get your information from. Uh, what about, has anybody heard or been exposed to, you get a call in the middle of the night and it's your nephew or your son who's in jail? Yeah. First of all, I think this crowd would say, you just stay there. You learn your lesson. Yeah. Right. But, you know, there are people which, it's understandable, you know, my, my daughter called, you know, it's a little, little bitty thing right now, but when she gets older and starts acting like her mother, and gets in trouble, uh, it's a tough crowd today, wow. Uh, you know, if, she, if that happens, it's, is it better to be cautious and maybe even rude, or, well, you can just sit there to, until, until tomorrow, because what they'll do is they'll want you to go down and get a you know, some kind of prepaid uh, credit card, or they want you to give them your bank account information, or checking account information, and okay, $500 and Nephew Billy gets out of jail. Well, Nephew Billy isn't in jail, and you know, they know who they're calling. It's, it's a scam. How about, you know, you're online, just as, as a normal person, how do people, how do these bad people get your information? Any idea where it comes from? How about uh, government records? You know, your voting records, Secretary of State records, uh, home purchase records, taxes, you know, anything where utilities, a lot of that stuff. I can go right online right now into the Manistee County uh, Treasurer and see all kinds of pro property tax information on everybody. You know, who, 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 who the house is registered to, the address, what the taxes are. I mean, people, uh, the people use these types of, that type of information for nefarious reasons. They're saying, okay, geez, you know, so I'm gonna call this person who lives at 2100 Lakeshore and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm with the county treasurer, your taxes were $2,100 last year, we miscalculated, it's actually $2,500 now, you owe us $400, give me your credit card number and we'll make it all right. That's, that's the types of scam we're seeing. So it's just really just be aware and be cautious and, and be, be, be you know, wary of it. Uh, how about phone numbers? Nobody ever gets any, any telemarketing calls, right? No. Vote for Trump, vote for Hillary, vote for whoever. It's still. Uh, I'm not sure how many people have landlines anymore. Probably this crowd, uh, quite, a, quite a few do. And whether it's landlines or cell phone numbers, they get those numbers and they call. And, you know, I've had people call me. You know, most of the computers I have are Macintosh or Apple. They'll call me from Windows, and they say, "Hello, this is Bob from Win from Windows Support Department in America, USA." Really? Okay. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, is my computer compromised? My wife hears some call and she just shakes her head because it's gonna be ten minutes. Oh my goodness, really? My what can I can I give you a credit card and fix it, please? Oh yeah, that'd be great. Give us credit card number. You know what that what I'm basically trying to very poorly act out. Because a lot of times these are off, offshore people, whether it's India or Pakistan or Turkey or Iran or Iraq, wherever it happens to be, 
they don't sound like Bob from the United States of America or America the United States. And as soon as you tell them, hey, I don't have a, a Windows computer, they hang up on you. Well, I call them back. Hey, I, I got disconnected. You know, can you fix my computer? And I make them go through it all again. Oh, it's a Macintosh click. Perhaps I need a, perhaps I need a hobby. Another uh, place they get your information from is Charity Records. Uh, if you, you know, whether it be not so much local, uh, um, you know, like, uh, Goodwill, because that's kind of anonymous, but if you make sizable donations to certain charities, they will either intentionally or unintentionally release a lot of that information. You know, so they'll see that Sally Johnson donated $10,000 to the, you know, Save the Cats Foundation, and it doesn't take them long to figure out that Sally might have some money. So they'll target Sally. I mean, that, that's what they do. Uh, volunteer organization information. Any information that you give out, it's it's not intentional. It's being released most, most likely. Not here. But not here. <laughs> but you know, it is possible, and that's the information that that people are using to try to steal your identity, and steal money from. Who's had or used the, any of those genealogy websites? You know, trace trace your lineage back, you know, overseas or wherever you happen to come from. Okay, tough girl. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I said genealogy. Yes. And what type of information are you entering in there? Paternal information? Maternal information? Where you came from? Where you live now? Which, those are some good sites and it's really interesting stuff to learn. But just know you are feeding the beast as far as your personal identifiable information. And somebody gets that for whatever reason. Oh, I'm you know my name's Sally Johnson. They can log in, and they're going to get a lot of your information. Oh, yeah, okay, then you know, oh, his, her mom is from there, and dad, okay. So then she they can call and basically it's called social engineering. Oh yeah, I know your dad back from home, and we used to you know go to fish fry on Friday night, man, and see. Oh yeah, yeah. And they have all the information that makes sense because we're trusting people generally. How can we protect ourselves? We'll go back to the passwords. Who has you know online banking or banking or uh, you know, Yahoo accounts, email accounts, Facebook accounts? How many of those have the same or close to the same password or PIN numbers? Yeah, I have like four or five that I kind of cycle through. Uh, consider it as much of a pain as it is. Consider changing those passwords up a little bit. You know, I, I just threw some on here uh, as, as examples. You can use like the ampersand sign, you know, and, and place with an A. Like instead of Adam, it'll be ampersand D ampersand M. That makes it a very complex password. And throw some numbers on the end of your password. Uh, like my wife uses the day or the month and year we got married. And so a lot of her passwords have that number you know, split up or together in, in that. So it's something that means something to her that is going to be tough to figure out. So she can remember? Right, right. Uh, another thing I like to tell people to use with passwords is, is make a phrase out of your password. Instead of just a password, you know, uh, Sally Johnson 123, use a password like Sally likes cats 123. Because a lot of the times people aren't expecting those type of passwords. Change it up. You can use a phrase. You know, I like boats. I like cats. I like dogs. Um, you know, uh, one that I have here is I love my grandson one two three four, and for I I use the number one, the actual number one, L, and then zero for the O, B E my grand. The A is the ampersand sign. Son one two three four. So I've got four special characters in that password. They're not gonna they're not gonna figure that out. It's just not something to think about. Uh, be mindful of, of the information you're sharing with people and online especially. Uh, we all see the, the joke with uh, the uh, during the Super Bowl time mayhem. The it was the Allstate uh, guy that uh, he jumps and burns up cars and uh, you know the treat you know jumpy 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 with. Be careful when you're sharing those type of details. Oh, I can't wait, we're going to Europe for three weeks. Okay, well, 
somebody happens to see that, okay, geez, Sally's going to be gone for three weeks from her house. Free for all. Be careful who you talk to. Just, just be mindful of it. Be aware. And that's the biggest thing. You're going to hear you know, again and again. Be mindful. Be aware. Eyes wide open. Uh, uh, another one I have is be wary of your email attachments. If you're not expecting an email attachment, and don't open it. I'd rather miss an email attachment and, and get in trouble with for, for whatever reason rather than infect my computer or have all my data stolen or locked up. Know who your sender is. If you know if, if my email address is Wesley Smith at Michigan.gov and all of a sudden you see an email from W Smith at Michigan.gov, that should be red right flag. It could be legitimate, but you just need to need to think about it a little bit more, look into it a little bit. Uh, when it comes, probably to another good way to protect yourself is make sure you have the, your malware uh, program installed on your computer. McAfee or Microsoft Security Centrals. If you have a Windows computer, Security Centrals is free, and I like it. That's what I use on my own because it's made by Microsoft. Windows is a Microsoft product. They do a really nice job keeping the bad people out, you know, with that software. Another thing you can do is create uh, a fake email account. Instead of having Sally Johnson at Yahoo.com, just put uh, you know cat lover at Yahoo.com and use that one email address for all your billing or all your email stuff that you don't normally do. Uh, bills and when you sign up for things, just kind of separate it from your regular email account. Never ever give anybody your debit or credit card information online. If a little box pops up and says, oh, you're, you know, Microsoft Windows is legitimate, you need to pay us $100 to, or you're going to lose everything. Never, ever, ever do that. Microsoft, the IRS, PayPal, they're never going to contact you online like that. Just like they're never going to call you on the phone. They're never going to call you and say, yeah, this is, this is bought through Microsoft. This is, this is PayPal, we need your account number. Don't, don't do that because that's, don't give that information out. Here's my favorite part. It's better to be rude than to be ripped off. If I can't verify, validate, or authenticate who you are and what you want, sorry, I, I don't give that information to anybody. You know, require them to send you any, send you a postal mail. Okay, this all sounds good, but just go ahead, go ahead and send me a, send me something in the mail so I can verify and authenticate that. I guarantee they're going to hang up and they're not going to hear anything again. Okay. That is my quick little presentation because it can get boring and I can drone on and you get tired of looking at me and listening to me. Does any, yeah. anybody have any questions, concerns? Yes, ma'am. What uh, place did you send for cybersecurity? What I like to use is Microsoft Security Essentials. Yep, and I, if you'd like, I can write that on a business card and, and give that to you, certainly. Yes, thank you. Certainly. And if somebody gets online and somehow your computer gets locked up, call your local law enforcement agency. You know, at least make or make a record of it. Will that work even if you have protection? Like I've got protection on it already. Yes. Will that work in addition to that? Yep. Because sometimes they won't. Right. You know. And then depending on, you know, there's so many different types of, of security, of malware security programs out there. It's hard to say there might be a conflict, but. That security essentials is what I've run on my systems for the last probably 10 years. And it's free and it's made by Microsoft. So it's updated by Microsoft, which is who makes Windows. So they, they're pretty on top of it. I really like it. Right, right. Anything's better than nothing, but I, I personally, if somebody can ask me what I recommend, I recommend security essentials. My security system came with the computer right. for 40 years. Right. <laughs> yeah, pass that down, exactly. It's, a lot of them don't, a lot of them will not agree with each other. It just depends. And that's why it, it just kind of depends. If you're happy with what you've got, you haven't had any issues, keep going. But if well, you I just don't. I more protection. Yeah. You know, I'm just wondering if, if they would interfere or I would lose that one. Well, one is probably enough, it's the better way to go. But you still want the information. Right. Yep. Certainly. You know, my computer might die. I mean, it's going to die before 40 years. Right. Then you get a new one. 
Why no? Because the security is gone. Right, right, right. I'll definitely throw in a business card for you. Wait. Once a year or so, I get a, my computer stops and it says, warning, this computer has been compromised, call such and such number, which I know is a scam, and I've talked to people, you, you don't you don't ever call that number because they want a hundred bucks. Well, they lock it up, they can unlock it, but, and I don't know what how I get out of it. I always figure out a way to get out of it. What What's your uh, recommendation on that? What Mike was saying is every once in a while, uh, when he's surfing for different types of cats that he wants to bring into his house. Yeah, it was just a, he, uh, cat, no, not cat, cat house. <laughs> meow cat, meow. Oh. Let's, not get, let's not go down that roadway. And a screen will pop up on the computer and it'll say your computer's been compromised, uh, call this number, give us $100, we'll fix it. And you generally can't navigate out of that. There's no, you know, the, the X button or whatever is gone. What you do is control alt delete. You, when you hit control alt and delete, it'll come up with a box that says different things and it'll look for task manager. And again, this is a little bit more, again, this is what I wrote. I didn't want to go down because I see your eyes glazing over. And you just, you're just going to cl close out your Internet Explorer or your Firefox or whatever. And that's another thing. Never, ever, 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 ever use Internet Explorer. I do not use Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer gets hacked and bad. Sorry, Microsoft. Uh, Firefox is freeware. It's free. And I like free. And it's they they do very well as far as keeping things updated. So Firefox is a really nice browser. A lot of vulnerabilities in my in, uh, Control, Microsoft. escape? Control, alt, delete. The three keys? Yep, control, alt, and delete. You shut the computer off. You shut the computer, you can shut the computer off or just shut down whatever browser you, that it came up on, which would be like. Yep, yep, yep. And when it comes back up, you're just fine, right? Yep, yep. They're trying to fake us out. Oh my goodness, I gotta call them and give them a hundred dollars. Nope, shut it off. And when all else fails, thank you very much for bringing that up, just shut the computer down. If, if you can, if it's locked up, power it off. Nine times out of 10, you turn it back on, it's gonna be just fine. Reboot. Any other questions? Ma'am? I get calls from the Right. <laughs> Just another one of those type of scams, and it's. I wish there was a, you know, like with with all the scams that go on, I wish there was a way for me to say, okay, yep, call us, we'll fix it. Yeah. But there's so many of them, and it's just, and again, that's why we do like this sort of talk. Or just make aware, wide open, eyes wide open. Make you aware of it. Ma'am? Yesterday I received four calls, and I, I'm pretty sure they're wrong calls. And it says, I have a call that I think so it says Manny Steve, you should have. And it's a Manny Steve number. Yep. Now, how can they do that? How can they get a Manny Steve number when the numbers are full? Right. Well, how do they do that? It's called spoofing, S P O O F I N G. I could, I could call you right now from my work phone and make it look like the Manistee City Police is calling. Really? Yep. Wow. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a fake yeah. caller ID. I mean, it's like I got four of them in a row and it was yep. all Manistee numbers. Yep. All different. Yep. I you had to be, I'm answering anything right. that I don't recognize the number, I figured if they want me back enough to deliver the message. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And then when you call them back, the line's busy. Line's busy or this is not a working number or or whatever, whatever. Anybody else have any questions? Comments, concerns, thoughts? Yes. How can you be sure you're safe when you order something and you're giving your credit card? What I like to tell people with that is if it's if it's an if it is a transaction you are initiating, uh you know, a bathing suit for the grandkids. If you go to bathingsuits.com, you select this bathing suit, and you order it, you're generally pretty safe. Okay. Um, what, an extra step that I like to say is, you, instead of having, like everybody has debit cards nowadays, you know, you can hardly anybody carries cash. Um, what I do is I have a separate credit card with like a $300 limit. 
that's what I use for all my online transactions. So most of the time the credit card companies are going to cover you anyway, you know, fraudulent purchases. But still, it's a $100 limit. Yes, ma'am. If I wanted to visa cards, you know, money on that. Yes, yes. If it's not, if it's a purchase you have not made, there is protection. You know, and whether it's but if you can purchase with that card, right? And, something, and they steal that, will they protect you? Oh yes, oh yes. Okay. Yep. Because that's what I use. I buy yes. for five hundred dollars on that right. Visa card. Right. And just use that on my If it's a fraudulent purchase, you know. Than my regular charge card. Right. Right. Yep, and that's that's a good way to do it. You know, just reloadable cards or, you know, a credit card where you have a low, low limit. And, you know, most Citibank uh, or, you know, Visa, MasterCard, most of the main companies are really good with buyer fraud. Um, but, you know, my concern or the most of the time you hear as far as data breaches, it's like Target or Walmart or something. You know, in their transactions is where the numbers get out. By and large, there's not a great deal of fraud being done, you know, of you and I making our little purchases online. They just don't have enough to gain. But if they, if they can get a million credit card numbers from a Walmart data breach, that's where they go, and that's where our data is compromised. I've actually had my charge card company calling me on my cell phone, saying everything for Yes. Yep, I have to say, I travel quite a bit. I travel around the country, and I've middle of the night get into some place and go to use my credit card that I use for travel for my car and they're like, yeah, sorry sir, this is not a valid card. Okay, I'm in, I'm in New Orleans this week. Yes, it's me. You know, try it now and it works just fine. So, hey, at least they're watching out for us, okay. right? Yeah. I got another question. Yes. I deal with Yahoo and then it'll say access not available. And then it comes up with my phone number, which was my number two years ago, 989, something like that. And it says, is this? Your correct number, and there's no, there's no no. Right. Yeah, you know, I got to press yes. And how do I get past that? And it goes on all the time. And see, I guess I'm not familiar with that particular. I've not had it's that. It's not a scam or anything. It's just that I can't get on to say, okay. just correct this phone number. There's, you know, it's their two party authentication and things like that. There's got to be a way, you know, in the menu someplace, but we all know you get into those menus on these computers, they go down and down, and unless you know what you're looking for, you're not going to be able to find it. Yeah. Okay. It's a little bit difficult on that one. Yep, that, that should work, but for some reason they've got his old phone number. I know, but you can only change it. Right. But he said he does, it does not give him the option to get that. It, it says, is, is this you? And I go, I go, no, there's no place to go, no. Right. Is this your phone number? I'm going to go, no. And it's only say, yes, confirm. And it, no, it's not my phone number. Yes, and then go to my account and yeah. go down and change it. When it says edit your information, yeah. then go down and re-edit your information. I think I did that at least once, and it still doesn't do it. Oh, I'll try it again. Yeah. <laughs> it won't hurt to push us. Anybody else? Any questions? All right. Well, hey, thanks for having, having me. And uh, Trooper Pritchard again and Trooper uh, Hall say hello and I regret, regret they could not be here, but... Did they really say hello? Yes, I got the Did text. They? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. I got the text. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we said hello Yes. That's what it does Yeah. Oh, yep. Yep. That's kind of one of the one of the places they send us for a lot of training in Virginia, uh, Sterling, Virginia, Arlington, and Alexandria, Virginia. Yep. We had a comp we just had a conference out there last month for uh, over there in, in called Hotland. Yep. Right. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And I'll get you the start. Well, I'm outside the car here on 12th Street, over the, over the bank a little bit. Show you here the railing, There's the car coming in. We've got 
sun is starting to get closer to the horizon. Well, I'm back up on top. It's, uh, you should use a tripod. In the The sun set last night. Was uh, invisible from the state. We got the sun lined up on the screen. Actually, it should be moving the other way now. We haven't been to the north, and now we're past the uh, summer solstice, so it should be going the other way. It's about uh, Sunday night time. Uh, right.
actually a little uh, chilly up here, I believe. We have a neighbor. a little faster, he'd get behind him. He'd stop, he'd catch up. No, no sense of sharing the whole fast at all. He was walking at his own pace. That's why they call him a cat. VA more accessible, accountable. I have I've had some great success with the VA, Saginaw, and in uh, the Cadillac. Now we've got this new Veterans Choice Program. I get my, some of my medical services right here in Kansas City. It takes a while to get it set up.
sun is just about touching the lake. Well, it's not about 4 a.m. I don't want to get a little picture of the penis. Good afternoon. I'm at Fort Rendezvous, south of Manistee, for the, the big shoot. The uh, big gun they have down here, it's off a Navy ship, World War II era. That's all I can tell you.
pigeon and I got the holes. All the way around it? All the way around it.
Excited? The Scott Bell Clown Band just warmed up. Are you people ready for a big show tonight? Yay! But before we start, we have some things to do. Scott Bell Optimist is going to uh, give a, make a few announcements, and we're going to bring up Mr. Joel Knowles and make a presentation. Hello, everyone. Just want to get a few things out of the way. Tonight is uh, an educator no. special night for the ones uh, educators in our community. And uh, the Optimist, just to give you a little background on this, last year we started a program called Honoring Our Heroes. And that program um, is, is continuing tonight with the second year of um, educator awards that we're going to give out. It's kind of a three-part series with education, with emergency services and then local volunteers and supporters okay so this is the first uh first night of this year and we're honoring the educator tonight appropriately as mason county central has has done such a great job out here tonight and uh, mason county eastern and other schools so um to get things started i want to remind people who the winners were last year of the award the award uh, went from mason county central last year was joan Bidak. Uh, Mesa County Eastern's uh, honoree last year was Dina Thurston, and the ESDs was Becky Skiba. So uh, as we continue to honor all of them, there's plaques here that hold their names, and it will be an annual event as time continues on. And tonight, to present the awards for our local educators, honoring our heroes program, we brought in the uh, superintendents and leaders of the ESD and the Mason County Eastern and Mason County Central. So to get that started, I want to bring up Paul Shout. Paul, come on up. And Paul is gonna make the presentation for Mason County Eastern Schools to this year's award recipient. Go ahead, Paul. Well, thank you. This year, um, Mason County Eastern is selected uh, middle school teacher has taught middle school for 20 plus years. Um, we actually started around the same time. One of us is aged a little harder than the other. But uh, she's done an exceptional job. One of the things that probably to me is the most remarkable is she takes 
students that uh, aren't necessarily readers. Maybe come into her classroom and don't have that real drive, and by the end of the year, they're reading. And uh, she has a fabulous library within her classroom. She makes sure the students have the books that they want to read.